Hi guys, welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. Today we're going to install our rear suspension. You can see I've got the uh, rotisserie pulled off the car now, sitting up on Jack Sands front and rear. Let's go ahead and take a closer look and see how we got that braced up. So I've got the uh, jack stand supporting under the uh, torsion tubes there. And then also I've got, just as a backup precaution, I've got our dolly adjusted down to suspension height. But it's not actually sitting on the dolly. It's just kind of a backup as we're uh, pushing, tugging, and pulling. Let's go around the front there and take a look and see how that's set up. So looking at the front then, uh, so what I've got is a piece of rubber between the uh, control arm and the top of the jack stand, that little cup area there. That's just going to help protect the finish while we're working with it. Uh, I'm going to be pushing and tugging on the car a little bit, so we've got to be really stable. Um, also, we don't really want to be metal to metal anywhere. Also, uh, the attitude on the car has to be dead level. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what the manual wants, they want the body set up uh, dead level from the inner lip of our door. I'm going to set that guy in there. Um, so we've got dead level uh, on that bubble. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our radius arms and we're going to work downwards 36 degrees from that. So if our body's not exactly right on, it's going to affect the angle of our radius arms. Let's go around the other side and just take a look at our layout. So first thing I'm doing, I'm just getting all my hardware, bushings, and lubricants, all the tooling I'm going to need uh, set up to do this. Everything's been replated uh, or replaced as necessary, depending on what we're doing there. So everything should be ready to go there. Also, we got our layout. Uh, so we've got our radius arms, radius arm cover, uh, new bushings from Porsche. These are original uh, torsion bars. They look to be in really good shape. I'm just going to reinstall those. Um, and then our trailing arms, um, as you saw, assembled in one of our previous videos. And then uh, going with some new Coney shocks on this one. So what I want to do, I want to go ahead and set up this side. Let me roll through it, uh, double check everything that I'm doing. It's going to work out just right. Once we got this side set up, we'll take a look at it. Then we'll go around to the other side. Uh, and put it together piece by piece and break it down for you, you can see uh, how, how it assembles. Okay, so we got our left side set up. This whole process, about four hours for the one side. Uh, most of it is just kind of sorting out the, the splines and the angle and how to get everything to uh, move into position without special tooling. The biggest problem that I ran into is this lower stud right here. So what happens is we, we have to set the, the angle of our uh, spring plate at 36 degrees and that's actually going to be dropping down into the area where this stud goes. Here's the stud. Um, and then we got to put the bolt through it so um, we can get the angle off of a uh, free swing without that bolt in there but we'll actually have to bolt some of it together and jack it up with the jack to actually get that bolt in place. So let's just take a look at it here real quick uh, see how everything works. We've got our uh, eccentric bolts here um, this front one here, this is going to move the uh, swing arm uh, front to back. This is your tracking. And then the uh, back one here, this is up and down. Um, that's going to adjust your camber. I um, did a little cheating before I took the car apart. What I did is I scribed in this area with a knife uh, the exact location of everything before I loosened up the nuts and bolts. Also put a scribe mark in the uh, body there to replicate that angle just to see when we put it back together we're going to be in the right spot so uh, by having those scribe marks in there when I reassembled I was able to get everything back together exactly as it was before I took it apart. I'll show uh, a couple pictures here just to show you what those scribe marks look like and then uh, let's get on over to the other side and get that one started. Okay, so here's the scribe mark you saw in those photos. Uh, even after all the undercoating goes on there, everything tightens back up, you can still see a little bit of a reference line to follow to. Also our torsion bars, everything is stamped uh, left and right, so I uh, don't want to mix those up. And then uh, the main problem here is going to be this bottom bolt and stud. Uh, what's going to happen, I'm going to set my uh, free angle, my free swing angle there, and it's going to walk down into this area. So. Um, definitely a right order of assembly uh, to make that work out so that we don't have to use special tooling. 
let's take a look at the scribe on the trailing arms. Okay, looking at the right side then, so uh, this little patch right here uh, was just cut in with the tip of a utility knife before I loosen those bolts up. So if I get right back on that mark, theoretically, I should be real close to where it needs to be after we get things reassembled. We should be able to get there quickly and fairly accurately. So yeah, a little bit of scribing before disassembly, a big help. Okay, uh, first thing I think we want to do here, we want to hang this trailing arm. This is going to be the first uh, piece to go in. Uh, you can put this guy in first, you can put the shock in first, doesn't really matter. But if these go in before our uh, radius arm, it's going to make things a lot easier. Let's get this one set up first. So working from ground height uh, makes it real easy to rest the trailing arm on the ground and just kind of press in the top section uh, so we can line our bolt up. Let's, let's go ahead and tap that in there. So we'll just go ahead and snug this down for now. Uh, and we'll just snug everything and then after everything's in place, and looks good. We'll go around and do uh, final torque on everything. So I'm getting ready to set up the uh, Kony shock to replace out the uh, original shock absorbers. The main difference between the early models and from 68 on up would be the amount of buffers they used uh, for a stopping bottoming out point on the shock absorber. Um, original early cars should have had eight buffer section in there and the uh, 68 and up at nine, as you can see here, um, this is set up for nine. However, this particular Coney shock, um, its range is, it'll compress farther and extend higher than our original shocks. So uh, range of a, a motion is not gonna be a problem. I just wanna make sure that it will come down far enough. So I'm gonna take one of those sections out. Uh, I've already done so on the first shock I've set up, just cutting one of these buffers out. Um, and hopefully that'll work out on our uh, suspension height. If not, something we can always uh, take apart and add back in later. Uh, here's a page out of the manual, uh, basically describing the difference between the earlier cars and from 68 on up. Talks about the, the use of the uh, different buffers. Also, uh, 68 and up had a little bit different angle on the uh, spring plate and also the size of the torsion bar. Okay, so I've got one of the buffers cut out of there. You can see now our distance, uh, same as the original. Got eight buffers in there. Let's go ahead and put our dust cover on, and then our bushing and sleeve. So we'll go ahead and slide that up inside the shock tower. So we're tightening the top down until the bottom's out. Okay, so we got our right shock put in place there. Uh, top end is tight, bottom end, uh, just got the bolt through, uh, slid through there with the nut on there. Uh, may have to take that out at some point and move this uh, trailing arm a little bit just for adjustment. But for now, um, that'll help us locate everything. Okay, let's go over to the uh, torsion bar and get that guy put in place. So first thing we wanna do is just kind of prepare the area to receive all these parts scrape off any excess uh, undercoating that might be on our studs. That cleaned off. Also, inside area here, we want to wipe this out really good with some denatured alcohol and then also our bushing on the outside edge. And that presses in there. Um, we want to get a good grip. So the rotation of our uh, rotating arm or spring plate is going to be on the inside, uh, not the outside. This is not going to rotate out here. It's going to rotate on the inside. Okay, so I'm coating our torsion bar with some lithium grease. Um, also, uh, gooping up the ends real good here where they go on the splines. The um, reason I want to goop that up real good, we're probably going to be pulling it in and out and in and out several times uh, to get our right spline adjustment. So grease all that up and we'll go ahead and slide it in. the inside of our bushing and this outside edge here 
of our spring plate is going to rub against a little motion on that. That in place. Okay, so then installing the radius arm next, uh, setting it up for a 36 degrees, so uh, plenty of grease on our torsion bar, and then down inside our uh, rotating arm, uh, lots of grease down in there uh, in that splined area. And I put some yellow tape just as a reference, a quick reference, uh, to help me locate my angle quickly. And then uh, also on our trailing arm, cut some tape sitting right up against the edge of our scribe mark. Okay, let's go ahead and set that guy in there, see what she looks like. Also, a uh, little bit of synthetic grease around this inside area where it's going to seat into our bushing. Okay, that worked out pretty good, uh, first attempt there. Other side, I had about a dozen attempts at least to get this to work out. Um, what, what can go uh, wrong here is your, your splines are different on the inside than the outside. So uh, inside splines of your torsion bar are 40 splines. Outer end is 44 splines. So uh, one spline adjustment on the inside equates to about a 9 degree up or down drop. And one spline on the outside equates to about 8 degrees uh, approximately up or down drop. So uh, right here though, that, that's where we need to be. Okay, next we're going to put the uh, radius arm cover on and bushing, uh, but before we do that, we need to lower our trailing arm. You can see our bolts are not going to quite line up here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull that bottom bolt out of the shock, uh, set the trailing arm on the jack, and just slightly lower it down until I get everything in position. Uh, once I'm in good position there, then we'll go ahead and slide our radius arm cover on. So installing our bushing, we're going to want to clean out this area here, uh, really good, denatured alcohol. Also, uh, same thing on the outside of this bushing. Uh, radius part goes uh, towards the inside. We're going to install this dry and press it down in there until it bottoms out. Okay, the reason we want that dry in there um, is the same thing. It's going to have a grip here, uh, rotation of your, uh, radi or your uh, radius arm is going to be on the inside, not the outside. So we're going to go ahead and grease this up uh, in this area here where it's going to rub with some uh, synthetic grease uh, here and then also on here. Plenty on this surface. Doesn't have to be super thick, uh, just needs to be a good coverage on there. Okay, I think that'll work. So I'm sliding it on there. There it is. And then tightening the first three bolts, uh, rotating them out uh, in a typical torque pattern so that the plate goes down nice and flat, doesn't get cockeyed on there. Uh, and once those three are in place, then we can go ahead and hook up the trailing arm. So I've got good alignment with my radius arm now and the trailing arm. I can no problem get those bolts in there. You can see I'm almost right on my uh, reference marks. Uh, but the problem here is this stud. As you can see, I get that up in there at this uh, free swinging angle here as it drops free under no pressure. Um, no way we're going to get that bolt in there. So the only way that's going to work, uh, clamp these two together with bolts and then jack it up with our jack. And uh, that'll get us the clearance when you slide that last bolt in. Okay, so I got my camber and tracking nuts adjusted. So I'm really ending up right where I need to be. You see now you see that scribe mark in there. Uh, so we're pretty much in the ballpark. Uh, I feel pretty confident when uh, this car is under full weight. We're going to be uh, real close to where we used to be before we dismantled. Um, if not, we can just loosen these up, make a fine-tune adjustment, and uh, retorque them down. Okay, so everything's on our marks, and uh, all the bolts are just snug for now. Um, you can see here our reference mark 
is a slightly different angle now, now that we got the radius arm and trailing arm jacked up. Uh, but by jacking it up, no problem getting our stud in there. Okay, so everything's in place and where it needs to be. We've got our rear shock absorber hooked back up. Also, rear brake line and retainer clip in place. Um, nuts and bolts are snug and uh, everything's basically in right position. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go ahead and look uh, both sides over real carefully. Everything looks good and uh, we're going to go around with a torque wrench and do uh, final torque on everything. So radius arm cover is going to be 34 pounds. Camber 36 pounds. And the tracking is 43 pounds. And 65.1 pounds on these rear bolts. And then 54 pounds on our shocks. And then last but not least, 86.8 pounds at the top. Okay guys, so we got everything torqued down and cleaned up. Let's just go ahead and look over everything one last time, see how we did, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. There's our right side. Everything looking nice and shiny now. Uh, hopefully everything in the right location. Around to our left side, and then coming around to our left side. Nothing really too difficult about any of this reassembly. Uh, probably the most helpful thing is just right order of assembly, and then uh, making sure you got plenty of grease on the torsion bar splines so you can make those fine adjustments. Let's go ahead and slide underneath the car and see what that looks like under there. And then a quick panoramic view of the bottom side. Plenty of length in our brake lines. Just gotta make sure we don't have anything too tight there. Uh, they're gonna be flexing up and down with our trailing arms. Okay, one top side view and we'll wrap her up. So if you're doing a rear suspension install, I wish you guys the best of luck. Subtle differences between the years, so before you dig in, you really gotta do your homework. Uh, I have mentioned once before my good friend Kaz over at the Canary Files. Kaz is doing a super job on a 69. Uh, so if you got a little bit later model, I recommend going over there, checking out his channel. Uh, I've got a real nice video on trailing arm rebuild and rear suspension install for uh, just a little bit later model. Very, very helpful video and excellent quality work. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.